It takes my regular sound card and turns all the volume settings down to zero and hides them. Oh, that's not true. Yeah, so I, I finally figured out how to hack through so we can transmit and receive now. So anyhow, um, I was asked to uh, talk, do a pre presentation for everybody, and, and I said, well, what do you want me to talk about? And they said, well, FTA is really hot right now. And there's some people that have never played with digital modes or FTA. So, yeah, FT8 is hot, it's a digital mode. Uh, I follow some of the Twitter feeds, and you'll see one or Twitter feed where somebody publishes a, uh, an article that says, oh, FT8 is the death of amateur radio. <laughs> and five minutes later, you'll see somebody else publish an article that says, FT8 is going to save amateur radio. <laughs> uh, so, so it's mixed reviews. I guess you either love it or you hate it. So what is this FT8 stuff all about? And, start with some introductions and demos. And so I'm John KC901. Uh, I've been licensed since 1979. I got licensed before I could drive a car. Uh, that says age 16. I really got licensed at age 15. Uh, I, had, I had my license before my lawyer's permit. Um, I actually retired from electronics manufacturing uh, and IT systems. Uh, so I have a smattering of how things go together electronically and uh, how computers are supposed to work, which never do correctly. Um, I'm also an active experimenter at Home World, and if anybody wants to uh, find me, find me at John at KC901 or KC901.com. He fixes my old rigs that don't work. <laughs> but I buy an antique and he makes it like new. I don't claim to fix stuff, but I do. Uh, it's, it's kind of a secondary type thing. So, what is FDA? First, a little history about it. FT8 is a digital mode, and some of the digital modes now are getting pretty old. One of the oldest digital modes is CW, Morse code. Uh, another one everybody's real familiar with is, is Radio, which is UI. Those are digital modes going back to the 19, late 30s and 40s. Um, but then uh, about 19, I don't know, late 80s, early 90s, some stuff like PSK31 started showing up where people could actually uh, type keyboard to keyboard on their uh, Commodore 64s and their uh, 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 Radio Shacks and Apples and everything. And the power of the PC got so good it could actually decode and encode the uh, audio levels and the digital revolution came. Uh, one of the digital modes that spawned from it is a mode called JT65 and JT9. And there's a whole series of uh, uh, digital modes out there. And, they were actually designed for really, really weak signals, like moon bounce, where you can't hear the signal coming back off of the moon. Uh, so it was really originated as for very little power. You know, let's see how far we can get on a milliwatt of power, or, or let's throw a thousand watts at the moon and see if we can hear it come back off the moon. Uh, now, the nice thing about software to find radio systems is there used to be an adage that says if you can't hear them, you can't work them. Well, sound cards are no longer true because they can actually decode uh, sounds that are below the noise level that we would normally hear. You might hear hiss, some hissing, you might hear a faint little tone, and the digital mode stuff will actually just decode it just like that. So, with the old JT65, uh, it actually has 65 different frequency shifts. And it was at about a 350 hertz bandwidth. Uh, and JT65, you may have heard, let me 
these little slow little tones going on for about a minute. Uh, GT9 was the next version that came out, and it actually used nine frequency shifts and a very small bandwidth. And almost sounded like, what's this guy tuning up for 45 seconds at a time? If you listen real close, you can hear a bit of a shift. But it sounds more like somebody's just keying up for 45 seconds at a time. Now, what's wrong with JT65 and, and JT9? Well, they're really slow modes. Um, one transmission is, a uh, transmission cycle is 60 seconds long. It takes 45 seconds to send a whole 13 characters of information. You can't send a whole lot of information. So you can send a call sign, and you'll see like a negative 20 or a plus four, uh, type, and that's basically your signal level, your RST report. Or you can send a call sign and call sign in 73. Uh, sometimes I'll send my call sign, uh, whoever I'm talking to his first name in 73. You can only send 13 characters at a time in 45 seconds, so it's really, really slow. So along came FTA, uh, you know, the voices. JT65 was really popular on HF. I, heard, I don't hear as much of it anymore because everything's all FTA you now. Uh, FTA is a little faster. Um, it only takes 15 seconds intervals to send that same message, not 45. So now you're getting four times the messaging back and forth uh, in one minute. And equivalently, it's about like sending Morse code at five words a minute. Uh, still slow, but remember, this is actually meant for really, really weak signal, uh, weak signal QRP type work. Um, FTA uses eight frequency shifts in a 50 hertz bandwidth. So it's really not a whole lot, and if you hear it, it sounds... So it sounds a little bit faster than JT65, but you don't hear the high and low range of tones as much. So as I said, it was, it was really FTA was developed primarily for multi-hop uh, sporadic E uh, skip on six meters. Um, and the reason is, is because you can, uh, on sporadic E, it's very sporadic, so your signal can start out booming strong and then get down to a whisper by the end within a couple of seconds. So it does make it uh, for fast and reliable uh, communications. There's also a, a version of this developed for de-expeditions where they can actually call back like two or three people at the same time and give them their reports at the same exact time. Um, and another thing was that, that started up with FTA, it, there was a version of JT65 that had it, but it was almost FTA came out right after is automatic operation. Somebody can call CQ, you can double click on their call sign, it'll actually make the entire conversation, it'll send the signal with the reports back and forth, say 73s to each other and put it in your log file. So you don't have to sit there and figure out, okay, do I send them a signal report, do I send them a 73? Not double click, it just does the whole thing. And that's where people say it's going to kill amateur radio because it's all automatic. Um, so with FTA, there's a new guy on the block. People said, well, what good is just sending a signal report? I actually want to talk to somebody. You know, I want to tell them my rig and my antenna and all that stuff. Well, one of the other guys, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, he created a, a, a derivative of FTA called FTA Call. And what FTA Call does is it allows you to send 13 to 23 characters in chunks. It'll break it up into those 15 second chunks. And you can actually say, hi, my name is John, I live in Gaylord. Boom, hit the button, and it'll split that up and send it, every, chunk it up into 15 second pieces and send it to the other uh, party. So what do you need to get started with all this uh, uh, digital mode stuff? Well, two of the three things you probably already have. One is a radio. Uh, and typically HF is, is the band, but I hear people on six meters and uh, two meters will play with it, just about any band. Uh, a computer, most people have a computer nowadays. Uh, right now the FT8 call is only on Windows, but the FT8 itself will run on Windows, Linux, Macs. There's a uh, flavor for just about anything. Um, with your radio, if you happen to have a computer-aided tuning, a 
hooked up from your computer to your radio. It's really nice because FTA has all the frequencies built in, so you just say, I want to be on the 40 meter band, you'll change your radio right to the, right to the FTA public frequency. Uh, it's not required, but uh, just nice to have. Uh, the third thing that you need is an interface, an audio, to push, uh, audio interface to push the talk on the radio and send the audio back and forth. You were just talking about the tablets, uh, you know, hooking a tablet up, and it works good, I've tried it. Um, I developed this, which didn't work too good, this one works a little better, but it actually will take the four pin uh, jack that's in a tablet or smartphone and feed it right into the audio interface. So you don't have to worry about background talking and stuff like that. So how much does this uh, this hardware cost for this little interface? Well, if you have the radio and the computer, you can build your own for about $25. There's just a couple of parts in here. Uh, not a whole lot to build for $25. But if somebody has a screwdriver, we can tear this one apart. Um, or you can buy a commercial interface, uh, which goes for about $60 to $300. Uh, for the radio, almost any USB transmitter, transceiver, uh, should work, except for when you get to the real old boat anchors, the Kenwood 520s and the FT-101s and the Hot Water 101s, tube type stuff, analog VFOs. Their VFOs are not stable enough for this type of transmission because you're playing with something that two frequencies are only one or two hertz apart. So if your VFO is drifting 30 hertz a minute, you'll never decode it. You'll, somebody uh, receiving won't make out what you're saying. So it has to be pretty modern, pretty stable. Uh, even my old ICOM, IC725, that's digital and it's 30 years old. So almost any fairly modern radio is fine. Um, so the newer radios with stable frequency synthesizers are best. Uh, for computer hardware, big and fast is not needed. You don't have to go out and buy a Windows 10 system for $1,000. Um, the WSJT software that I have here I'll be showing, uh, well, it'll run on an XP computer. Uh, and I believe FL Digi still runs on an XP computer too. So you don't need big and fast. Uh, minimum requirements is usually a USB port uh, to trigger your push to talk, a sound card interface of some kind. And just minimal gigahertz CPU, I think my smartphone has that in it, so you don't need a whole lot to run this stuff. So getting back to the interfaces, um, this interface is the same thing you'd use for FL Digi, for PSK31, for APRS, for Packet, for RTTY, uh, just a generic thing. And you can buy them from MFJ, West Mountain uh, has a brake blaster, Tiretronics has the single link devices. Uh, one thing to be careful if you're buying a commercial device, uh, two things, and I think the one doesn't exist anymore, is one, um, I can't remember if it's Tibertronics or MFJ or West Mountain, you buy the radio with the matching cable going to your radio. So they'll sell you an interface with a Yazoo cable or with a Kenwood cable. Uh, some of the other ones, you have to buy the interface and then you have to go and buy the cable that matches your radio. So just something to be... Uh, be aware of if you're going out and buying an interface. Uh, some of the nicer interfaces actually have their own sound card built in. Uh, they work very well. And the nice thing about it is your PC sound card is available for your regular music, uh, entertainment type pleasure without it interfering with the radio. Uh, another feature is, uh, since we're kind of a little talking about digital, is on um, 20 meters, uh, somewhere right around the slow scan TV signal uh, calling frequency, is a mode called um, digital voice. And you, can, you actually need two sound cards, one for you to talk and receive, and the other for the radio talk and receive. And you can actually talk digitally, and it works really, really good. It's also another one where if you switch to upper sideband and talk to somebody, you wouldn't make them out, but if you switched over to digital voice, you would actually hear them almost, almost broadcast quality. Um, so again, prices range $60 to $300. Um, there's some older models, and I actually brought one here. This is an older, this is a really old brick blaster. It's so old, it's got an RS-232 port on it, not even a, a USB. 
But it used to be these only handled the transmit side of your, your uh, signal. It just would send the signal to the microphone and push the talk. You still had to build your own cable to go to the receipt from the radio out to the PCN. But I think those are the days of the past now. So a typical setup, you have your PC, your audio interface, you have your USB cable, your microphone, PC, they go to the audio interface and then that goes right back up to the speaker and microphone jack on the radio. Some radios, the microphone uh, has a speaker output on the microphone jack, so you only have to run a <coughs> single cable. So the uh, piece of software to run FT8 is called WSJTX. I don't know what the WS stands for, but the JT stands for Joe Taylor, who yeah. created the uh, uh, software. Weak um, signal. Weak signal, Joe Taylor. Thank you. I never figured the first two out. Well. I figured it was another of the authors' uh, names, uh, because there's about eight or nine people that are behind the software. But F at FTA is a uh, guy named Steve Frankie who got involved with a few years ago. He's a Professor of Engineering at the University. Oh, okay. okay. I was looking him up and I could not find him down in the list of authors. Uh, yeah, there was a big article in QST in the last year, and so Joe Taylor and Steve Franklin co authored the okay. article. Okay. I'm allowed to hear behind the QST QST. There's some there. <laughs> well, I get up there and hear behind it. Uh, <laughs> So anyhow, uh, it's, it's very similar to a lot of the other digital mode software, down below is a waterfall. Each one of these little signals here is an FT8 uh, session, somebody who's transmitting an FT8. Uh, the top side here is all of, everything it's hearing and decoding properly, and this side over here on the left is pretty much uh, the stuff you're receiving and transmitting, talking to a uh, specific station. The center part here, um, Right, uh, I don't know if the mouse is too good here, but right here is where you can select the band, and if you have cat control, it will automatically set your radio to it. But the nice thing is, is when you pull that down, it also lists the frequency. So if you have a plus 50, you can, it, it'll remind you which frequency you're dialing to. Um, this is your receive level. Over here, you can set your transmit power level and different buttons to call CQ. And, Etc. So we're, we'll, we'll, we'll play with it, the actual live version of the static uh, screen here. So what do you need to do to get running in, uh, with the software? It used to be software was a real pain to get up and running. WSJT doesn't want a whole lot. It wants to know who you are and your call sign. The hardest one is your grid square locator. And I looked up uh, Traverse City area is about EN74. You get over to Gaylord, it's EN75. So you'll probably be EN something. Uh, in the area. Uh, it needs to know which sound card, which is a little glitch I had here because this TV turned into a new sound card and rerouted some signals for me. Um, <coughs> it wants, if, if you have computer aided tuning, it'll want to know the model number of your radio so it can <coughs> tune it correctly and how it's going to keep push to talk. And that's it. You're off and running and ready to go. So, a couple of screenshots is call sign, my locator. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different boxes to check, but my, and I don't know why it's not set, but I check double click call sign on TX enable. Uh, what that does is if somebody's sending CQ and it shows up in the list, you can just double click right on that call sign and it'll automatically start replying back to, re replying back to the person. You don't have, uh, be, it's kind of tricky beforehand, because you'd have to double click on the call sign and then go over and hit enable transmit. And by the time I do that, that 15 seconds, half of it's gone already. <laughs> I've already missed it with that first session. So for the audio, um, at the time I did the screenshot, I only have one audio card to put in. Uh, now I have two. Uh, and then also, I have, at home, I have an IC725. I have it hooked up to this uh, Comport 13. And, I, and that's CAT, and the IC725 is an old radio, so it doesn't know how to push the talk through the CAT interface. So I have a second USB card 
that pushes the talk, that keys the push the talk. Modern radios do it all on the same cable. Uh, a couple of tips and tricks. Reduce your power. Don't send, a, your radio probably won't survive if you're sending 100 watts out because this is a 100% continuous duty cycle where your voice, you have breaks between your voice, longer and softer, pauses between words. This thing is just gonna slam tones for 15 seconds at a time. And even at, on, on this TS-50, I only run it at about 10 to 15 watts, the uh, fan starts kicking on in the back to cool off the finals, even at that power level. So be kind to your finals. Uh, you don't have to run 100 watts unless you're, you really want to push it. Um, if your radio has an ALC on it, keep ALC, don't let that ALC meter start moving. Because ALC means you're limiting and you're going to start distorting your audio output. So keep your ALC to zero. Uh, a couple other tricks. If you have a speech processing button on your radio, make sure all that speech processing or compression is turned off. It messes up the tones going outbound. You need an accurate clock on your computer. Uh, it's got to be within two seconds. If you're more than two seconds off, they won't decode and encode properly. Um, best way to do that is just go into your computer and set an uh, NIST time on which you can do, uh, not here, but down in the clock setting, you, there's a setting that says internet time, you can check it. Uh, you can select, I think, either Microsoft NIST, or you can put a web address in the time source that you know. But I use NIST myself. Um, another couple of tips and tricks, some radios have a data jack, or a packet jack, or an auxiliary jack, on the back end. Um, most of them do. TS-50 doesn't, but most radios do. That makes it nice so you don't have to unplug the microphone all the time and plug it back in when you want to use the microphone. Um, I do have one problem with my IC-725. When I have the data jack running, the microphone's still hot. I was actually running digital, and I had music playing in the background. And I'm looking at the meter going, why's that meter center <laughs> pound? Then I realized the microphone, it, both were sending out email at the same time. So it's like, oh, I know why, click. Um, so the other nice thing about using the data jacks on the back of the radio is they're usually a constant uh, volume going in and out. So you don't have to sit there and play with the volume controls or light gain controls. You set them once, you're done. Um, another tip and trick. Sound card, I just had to refresh this PC. It was going a little bonkers, so I did the um, uh, refresh my windows. That'll keep all your data, but remove all your programs. Um, that was good and bad, because it still has some problems, but not as bad. Anyhow, one of the problems is when it refreshed, it turned like Dolby surround sound and, and all these fancy th settings on. I wasn't decoding anything. I couldn't figure out why until I went into the sound card settings and you know the you know echo uh, you know mid room echo was turned on and all that. I had to turn all those settings off. Uh, Microsoft likes to turn all that fancy stuff on for you. So you can use the mixer controls to adjust your transmit audio. Um, this is a good thing to do into a dummy load for five to ten second intervals, uh, so you don't want to tune up on other people. Just like most, most of these, uh, just about every sound card interface will have a couple, this one's on the side here, a couple of controls to set your receive and your transmit audio level. So it's good that when you're doing the transmit side, you use a dummy load, get your power set, and then you're good to go and you're all done. So I, I was saying before, when you, uh, uh, Playing, trying to figure out what frequencies to be on for FTA. Uh, the nice thing is, is that they're all listed in that drop-down box. So even if you don't have a cat control, you can just hit the drop-down box and it'll say, oh, 20 meters is 14074, so you can just dive right to that frequency. You won't find too much FTA stuff outside of those frequencies that are listed here. At least I have, I have yet to. Um, the new one, FT8 call, where you can actually make QSOs between each other, um, actually do chatting. 
they're in flux because they're having a battle of, well, if we put them on here, then we're interfering with the FTA guys, and the FTA guys are interfering with us, so there are going to be a couple of kilohertz off somewhere. And they're still in flux. Even last week, they were talking about, well, we're going to move 40 meters off two kilohertz or whatever. Uh, you know, not playing with the RIDI guys, and not playing with the PSK guys, and not playing with them. So it's best to check with the software, because it's still all going around. Um, these are the two uh, signal sources for, or signal sources, internet uh, links for uh, JT65 and FTA call. Um, and if anybody wants some, I can give it to you later. But typically, if you type Google uh, WSJT or JT65, you'll probably get that as one of your first places. Um, one problem with FTA call is it's still considered beta testing. And I had to do this last night. I went to power it up just to do a double check before I came out to do the presentation. I popped up the software and it said, sorry, it expired. Please go download a new version. Boom. Uh, so it expires about every two weeks right now. So you have to continually upgrade the uh, FTA call. And there's more stuff coming out. It's always in development. Uh, if you go to the uh, WSJT website, you just go all the way down to the bottom of the page. They're already talking about 2.0 of the software. So it's always being upgraded uh, constantly, new features, new functions. Uh, I heard rumor that 2.0 is going to have FTA call built in, and then I heard rumor that it's not going to have it built in. So who knows what 2.0 is going to bring with their current so with that, I actually brought um, our uh, club's go kit. We have it on the air and running, and we can actually make a uh, uh, actually make some QSOs if we want. And there is the uh, waterfall up here on the screen, and it's kind of active. It's got to be about what <laughs> almost a dozen there, and just did a decode. Um, the other nice thing with FTA call is you can change colors for different things that are happening. Uh, for example, CQ uh, will show up uh, for this one with the default colors of white, purple. But if it, uh, it also looks at its own log, the WSJT log. And if it's a new country, it, it's dark purple. Mm -hmm. So it's telling you, not only is this guy calling CQ, but he's a country you haven't worked before. So that's how people are getting their DXCC in a weekend because they're. One just popped up. Yep, oh, yep, there he is. And if you look at C, CO2, I've talked to Cuba before. Is that Cuba? Yeah. It's kind of hard to read with the dark purple. But um, so it's telling me that it, it's Cuba. And I, I have to work Cuba with the software. Um, but as the log collects, it will it'll turn that to white purple after it. Um, about logging, you can hit this button here and actually log the QSO when you're all done. Uh, it puts it in a log in, uh, in the WSJT software, but the log, if you go to the file where all the logs are kept, it also produces an ADAF output, so you can upload the ARRL or uh, put it into um, F, uh, not F, does FL did you take ADAFs? Because I use DM, or D, not DM7, ham radio deluxe. You can import it to Ham Radio Deluxe. You can upload it to EQSLCC, uh, all of those places. I don't use FL Digi's logging uh, myself. And it also works with the uh, N1 MM uh, contest logger too. So, they may have questions. Yeah, what frequency is this on? This, this is for, oh, uh, well, this is, that really isn't 80 meters. I'm really on 40 meters, 70, 74. And this is your audio pass band, so it looks like it's starting at about 400 hertz and going up to about 1500 hertz <laughs> in audio tones. And the frequency, is there a specified spot you have to be operating this stuff? Yes. Is it just up above the CW band? Uh, it's above the CW band. Um, the software, when you pull this band chart down here, it'll actually tell you the frequencies. Like, uh, so, so all you have to do is dial the 7074, and that's where all your activity will be. You don't have to tune it. Well, that's where it answers my question, because I noticed watching it on a panic after you see the shh. Yep. 
So you'd think they'd be interfering with each other an awful lot. Uh, that's kind of the problem they're having with FT8 call because it looks like FT8, but they're incompatible between each other. So you'll you'll see a, you might see a solid line, it might be a dead night. You'll see one line, you're going, why, am I, why isn't it decoding? Well, it's because it's either FT8 call or vice versa. But, yeah. So, are they sequenced so that they're all coming out at the same time? Yes, that's yes, that's why your clocks have to be within two seconds, because at zero seconds on a minute is when a transmission cycle starts. And it goes to about 10 to 12 seconds and then receives. You get about three to five seconds of decode time. And then at 15 seconds after the minute, the next transmission cycle starts. And it does that every 15 seconds. Okay. So you'll, and you'll actually see this, this bar down here. It's actually counting 15 as it goes across. And as soon as it gets to about 10 to 12 here, we should see this scroll up with the new decodes. Yeah. There it goes. Okay. Hmm. And now it starts all over again. It's already three seconds into the next. So it's a little bit faster paced uh, type conversations. You only got about one or two seconds to click the button saying, I want to talk to this person. What happens if you get two or three people trying to call at the same time? Uh, only one uh, will, will latch on. Uh, and that happens to me a lot. I'll, I'll answer a CQ back. And it'll, it'll just disable the, uh, the trans. This will go red when you're uh, transmitting. It'll disable that, and you'll see in the log that he made uh, a contact with another person. Uh, the only exception to that is if you go into de-expedition mode, then you can do multiple at the same time. I have not tried that. I've been not, I have not been bold enough <laughs> to try to answer to like two or three people back at the same time. Um, the other uh, thing down here is where this checkbox right here says auto sequence. And that's the one where if somebody's calling CQ, you double click on them, it'll actually send your information out, get his report back, 7 to 73, get another 73, along the QC. You don't have to do any transmit, receive in between, you just let it do its thing. It's there. Let's wait about seven seconds here, and I'll just click on the one that's calling, as long as it's not calling CQ to the XL. Where's your antenna? Uh, it's the G5RV outside. Okay. Use the club's uh, antenna here. Uh, right now I'm actually transmitting to uh, K3ZK. We'll see if he comes back. And he's got a, he's pretty loud. Uh, the signal reports are in decibels based on a signal to noise level. Uh, plus two is like S9 plus 10 uh, on your meter. Uh, you'll see some other signals. I just saw a negative 16 here from uh, W1HS. Uh, negative 16 is really, really low. When you get to negative 20 to negative 24, you probably can't even hear the signal in the noise, but the, the, the sound card is actually still decoding a signal. So let's see, I have made two attempts now to contact K3ZK. <coughs> I think my question is, is am I really transmitting? I you have to be out of contact. You're red. Oh, there we are. We went red, yep. Hmm. So I'm up here. He actually gave me a signal report back of plus four. Mm -hmm. I'm giving him one of minus three. So he actually faded. He started out as what, plus two? Yeah. I think when I hit the button. Yeah. Yeah. And now he's down to minus three. So he's actually gone down five decibels in signal. Um, so there could be a little bit of QSP going on on 40 meters, no QR on one of the two. So I've done about 600 contacts since May June okay. on FTA. Um, you might want to show them the other tab of the sequence, the automatic sequence. I think you should have one, you want to have two now. On the right-hand bottom corner, you see where you have two highlighted? Click on one. See so what? Click on right above there, click on tab one. That will show them the oh. auto sequence. There. That, that's what's being yes. sent. Huh. <coughs> and it just goes one line every 15 seconds if the signals are good. There they go. It sent 73 to each other. Here's the log. It popped the log up. You want to add it to the log? Yeah, I'll add it to the log. Then I'll, when I get home, I'll upload it to uh, AWRL and QSL. 
what's a, a good outside source of additional information? A good outside source? Yeah, well, or, yeah, if you publish something, that's fine. The, the best place to go is the uh, WSJT uh, website. Oh, okay. Because they have, you know, full manuals here. They actually go into detailed explanation. There's loads in here for, they just use for lean models. Okay. Uh, but they actually detail what each mode does, why you use it, uh, how you use it, uh, stuff like that. That's about the best place uh, to get information. Um, they, they keep their documents really, really up to date. They keep their, as you know, with 2.0 coming around the corner, they keep their software going up to date. Um, FT8 call, I don't play with the JT65 on any like groups out of that IO or anything. But I do uh, subscribe to the one out for FT and call because I'm keeping up on that one uh, for actually making uh, QSO conversations. Is that where you, uh, the resource that you just cited, is that the one that you use to learn this? Yes. Learn yeah, this? the Princeton.edu, um, the, the big link I have there. And this, I, can, I can bring the link back up uh, on the slide. That's where I learned about you know, JT, back JT65 and 9. So when, or when they went to FTA, it was just a matter of just uploading the latest software and selecting that mode and going on from there. Just do a YouTube search and there's videos by the hundreds of people demonstrating doing this. Doing what he's doing. 101. 101. 101. <laughs> Some of them are Joe Taylor giving his lectures. Yes. Yeah. I have not used this to transmit yet, but I've, I've used it quite a bit to receive. And I've uh, looked into this matter of, of whether the uh, stations can be on top of each other. And just in terms of receiving, mm -hmm. uh, and, and from, from actually testing it, and uh, looking at how close the, because in that report where the colors are, it says the, uh, Essentially, the frequency that it's on. Yes, yes. And sometimes, I mean, really, I've looked for those that would be right smack on top of each other. Yeah, as a matter of fact, it's this column right here. Well, you can see these two stations are like 50 hertz different from each other. Yeah, yeah. I found yeah they can be like that over each other. Yeah. And they, you know, with, with a 50 hertz, 56 hertz uh, bandwidth, you know, there's going to be some overlap. So I have found instances uh, where they have overlap. I've also looked for occasions where not only did they overlap, but one of them was much stronger than the other. And they both decoded. And they both decoded. Yes. And it's by design that it can it can find those because the encoding pattern, they won't it's, it would be very unusual to have two stations being sh shifting the frequency for the code and information they're sending be yes. identical to another one. So, and this also has a, has a, um, has a fair amount of redundancy in the encoding scheme, so you can lose. You can lose like half your bits. I don't remember how many, how many of the transmitted bits you can lose, but I mean, it's a substantial it's number. It's like a quarter or something. It's a, it's a big, it's a big number. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a really it's amazing really an amazing encoding and decoding scheme. Um, a lot of the digital modes um, are like that. One of the things that really, to this day still impresses me is um, Michigan uh, Digital Traffic Net, they meet uh, two or three times a week. Um, one of the Saturdays uh, that their net time was, was the same time as a RIDI contest. Mm -hmm. So there was RIDI signals all over the place. So they decided uh, we're going to transmit our uh, AWR radiograms using MT63. And MT63 is almost as wide as voice. It's a wide one. So I'm watching this radiogram come through, and I'm seeing all these radio teletype signals just just smearing this this message. And it looks like, oh, this ain't going to decode. And it just popped that radiogram right up as if those radio signals weren't even there. And they were just tra they were trapped. I mean, they were literally overloading. Uh, the signal, the dual uh, other digital signals. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> MT63 can lose a quarter of the uh, copy. Yes. And yeah. up to a quarter and still decode. It's still decode, yeah. It's, it's just amazing. So we're watching all the pendles in the microphone. No wires between them. It's sending back and forth. 
Kimball's on a microphone, MT6, it works great. It gives you the whole radiogram and you just want to make the type in the changes you want, push a couple buttons and send it back. Mm -hmm. Hold your Kindle up next to the microphone and turn your transmitter on. And it's out for going right away. Question for you. Yeah. Have you used this to test antennas or anything like that with the, the signal reports that come? I do. Um, my antenna favors New England. My 40 meter dipole, for some reason, I can pull up W1s, 2s, and 3s, and I have just a dickens of a time with 5s and 6s. Hmm. Uh, so there's, um, now my dipole is uh, going north south, so the radiation pattern is east west, and I have a heck of a time with southwest. And I, New England W1s, 2s, and 3s, I just about hit them every time, and other times I, and I get bad signal reports to yeah. the southwest too. I get, you know, he'll be booming in at like a plus two and it's like negative 20. My signal can't be that bad. <laughs> so, so yeah, I, I do look at uh, intent patterns with, uh, based on what you're receiving um, and, and the signal reports are receiving. I consistently receive like negative 15s and 20s to the southwest. I mess around with the digital world a lot over the years. Started with PSK 31 tag when that was hot. Yep. And I get hot and cold on it, and I played with it on DT65 quite a bit a few years ago. And then I got last winter I fired it up, and FTH's the hot mode now. Mm -hmm. um, is there any other digital modes out there that are hot right now other than FTH? FTH seems to have taken everything. By storm, because yeah, kind of even the PSK bands, I've heard you know FT8 has you know got a dozen of them here at a time. You go down to PSK, you might hear one or two guys yeah. now uh, talking away. So this is this is the fad. This is the Elmo toy of the year. Type of thing. <laughs> uh, I'm sure another one will come around, come along. Everybody will shift over to that. I'm really surprised Digital Voice hasn't taken control uh, as it has, because that's been around for I think about four years now. Yeah, and and it's the the they've actually fixed some of the decoding methods. It it, it really decodes better than a side band. The digital associated helmet is pretty cool too. It looks like it's looking pretty sharp. Yes, it's a, it's amazing what they can uh, what they're decoding now. Now that we have horsepower just um, to do that. So so regarding audio, I have a question. Um, I realized this when I was. Um, we were using MT63 or MT65 um, to do JT65? the. JT65? Yeah. yeah. No, on, on two meters, we were using MT60. Oh, when we did the test yeah. to the hospitals? Yes. Yes, my that kids, was MT63. Yeah. My kids were screaming in the background, and the tablet didn't care. And yeah. I, I thought it was so amazing. I posted a YouTube of I mean, You can hear all the background noise, and it's, it's like chaos is happening off camera, but the message decodes. So I was, I was really intrigued by that. So I have this. Um, I forget who makes it, it's called the DSP9 Plus, it's an audio filter basically. Mm -hmm. um, so I started adjusting the cutoff for the top frequency, um, but, you know, basically the low pass and the high pass, to try to narrow in to see where those tone ranges are. I actually looked up how, the, how that works and where the upper end. Mm -hmm. I tried to filter out some of that screaming in the audio um, to see if I can improve the quality of the signal. And that, that got me thinking about in this mode, because that did work. Um, it, are there any special settings that actually help it decode, like um, filtering in the radio that's good to use, or do you recommend leaving um, it wide open and flat? Wide open, wide open is the best thing to do. Um, most of the radios I play with are so old, they don't even have the bandwidth that the newer radios do, because you can listen to like four or five kilohertz on some of these new uh, Yezus and Kenwoods and everything. My stuff is old, if you, if you look at the screen up here, you can almost see where it's where it tapers off right down here below 100 hertz. Yeah. And I don't even see anything above 1500. Yeah, I go to just it just goes like that. I go almost to 3 kilohertz. Yeah, yeah, the newer stuff will go to 3, but this this thing here only goes to about 1500. You can just, just watch it, watch the waterfall just turn it into nothing. Oh, so, so depending on the audio output, then. Yeah. Can, yeah interesting. Um, but uh, technically, I, I've actually run uh, uh, my CW audio filter. Uh, on some of these signals, and it doesn't seem to care. It, it'll decode it either way, it just gets rid of the other signals is all. You don't see the decodes on the stuff that's been uh, squashed out of it. Huh. 
Yeah, the audio processing itself is the big horsepower. The biggest key is to make sure your your special effects are turned off on your audio card. Because that will drive you nuts every time. It's like, I see the signal, there's a loud signal, and never decodes. And it turns out to be some Microsoft decided, oh, this update, I'm going to turn reverb on. <laughs> Thank you, Microsoft. Don't help me, please. Just in the last couple of days, literally, uh, the release candidate for 2.0 has been released. Yes. It's, it's not a final release, it's still in a uh, testing mode, but it's been released to the public to, to play with. And uh, Friday night they're doing a one hour test in this new, not the fox and hound mode, but this new mode that would allow it to be used for things like video etc. Yes. Uh, this is the Joe Taylor. Yeah.
this last summer where I had to run into the scene from. And in uh, a long weekend, uh, have you ever used that uh, ESA reporter website to see the spot? I've been on it often, but I don't know. There's a setting in this. That'll upload the yes, ESA yeah. upload it. Yes. You can see all of your contacts, and it will uh, list them for you. You can uh, download it, and you can file if you want. Anyway, it was very good for three days. This was the summer, for 20 years, and uh, this nighttime activity. 90 plus countries. 90 plus entities in two or three days. Do you guys see the only one? You see the only one, but I think we get it. Move my mind. Yeah. I remember that going and they said it seems fine today. I couldn't work on the ladder, but I saw them on the other light side. There are just tons of features on here. Yeah, they talked about the PSK reporter tool. Uh, I think there's another blogging tool in here. Some of these, like QRA 64 and I scan, and SK is for moving out and sort of meteor scanner. I don't know if it was all live or not, but Whisper was I don't know. Whisper was hot there for a little while, and then I haven't really heard a whole lot about it. That's an even more a weaker scanner. Yeah, that, that's the definitely you know, one milliwatt transmitter mode. <laughs> Oh, something else I should mention was a setting. It was one of my first conversations. It was really, really fun when you find a setting here. Um, right here. This box is normally not set on install software. It says disable transmit after setting 73. Well, I made a two soul with the guy, and all of a sudden, 30 seconds later, setting 73 again. Didn't he get it? It's setting 73 again. Didn't he get it? I finally realized I had to manually shut it off because <laughs> it just kept setting, setting 73 over and over and over again. So I went and I said, that ain't right, because when I was playing with JP 65, it would just stop when I was done. And then I found out this box wasn't checked anymore. It used to be checked on default. Uh, so I also set 73 and just shut the transmitter off. I thought it was pretty funny in all that. Just thought of doing it over and over and over again. So, oh, what does it take to bring the picture back on? Do you have to connect that box on or the next time? I just double clicked on this guy's CQ and it automatically turned it on. It is. Let me free this guy to trust the box. Yeah, yeah, once it says 73 back and forth, then just turn the transfer back up. Yeah. One of the things I find is if I'm calling CQ with the bottom button, it may take three, four, five times before somebody even answers me. What I've done wrong is I get a page and I go somewhere else, and then I get them to call me back. And then when I click on their call, I have a different transmittance frequency. Yes. And that gets me in trouble. I don't know what to do sometimes. So I, I look at what their problem is on, and then I either say match transmit to receiver or easy transmit, and then I have to delay it to be a minute before I reconnect again. Yeah. So what did I do wrong? Did I not do that? Not have different receiver transmit frequency? There used to be, and I think it's in the settings now, we used to get chat box here a long time ago, that said always match the transmit to the receiver. I think they could get over the settings. But I, I actually had contacts complete. Oh, yeah. I mean, you one, 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 one can be here, you can be over here, and they'll still complete each other. So I really shouldn't be doing moving frequency. I just let it go. And you, should let it, yeah, you should let it go because uh, the other guy might actually have another signal near your frequency. So WSJT will try to find okay. an open slot. Uh, where it's not decoding and, okay. and put you in that open slot. Uh, but you can, there are one of these in here that says set the uh, transmit always equal to receive for the same slot. It changed it over the years, and I'm not sure if it's, well, here's TXRX now. Yeah, that's where I moved it in the map. Yeah. Then I, then I delay it and lose it. But I, I never do, I just let it do its thing, and once in a while I see it skip. Did you do the JT alert? I don't use JTLS. It's neat. You can actually 
text message session with JT Alert. I've seen those show up on Twitter. It's neat. So I can say, you know, can you please listen to me on so and so? I've never worked that message before. And actually, I've got it. I'm looking for you. I don't see you yet. Now I see you. And then I get it. <laughs> so it's like, I mean, I'm not begging you to receive my job. And there's some people will answer that. Right? No. There's a guy that has a guy that has some things on the text Yeah. 
the value of the nine one band. He has worked five bands, worked off stage on a computer.